iOS has been installed on my phone for the past 7 days. I have tested it the best as I could. And this is the community edition by the way. So if you're curious, this review is gonna be all about Arrow OS Android 11 Community Edition. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe. And by the end of the video, if you enjoyed watching this channel, do leave your like because that's really valuable. Without wasting any time, now let's start the video. Let's start the video by talking about plotware. So in Arrow OS, you would not be seeing any plotware. So basically, you don't really get any application at all in this room. So it's super clean and super minimum. So it's all on to you to install as much applications as you can via the Play Store and then you can fill it up. But by default, there are no blotware, nothing. And basically it's the most minimal Android ROM that I've actually ever seen. Now let's talk about the animation smoothness. In terms of animation smoothness, Arrow OS, I have tried it before, but this kind of smoothness I did not expect. So basically all throughout my testing in the community edition, I did not face any kind of frame drops. You can see here that there is a frame number which is being specified at 60 and no matter what operation you do, it's going to remain the same. Like no matter if you're switching between the application, it's all 60 Hertz because K20 Pro's screen has been locked to 60 Hertz. You can go home, you can actually go to settings and I misplaced that and then you can even scroll, you can open something, you can switch application, you can go home. All in all, every single operation in this room has its smoothness to it and you know it's just as smooth as butter on a paper melting down because of heat so in terms of animation smoothness i will give it a five out of five without any second thought now let's talk about the customization option and all in all there isn't really much options to customize in arrow os community edition i'm not really sure about the other editions but in community one you don't really get as much as you would expect so basically there are some cool touches to it like for example here if you go and you can see network indicator option is right in network and internet. So basically they have not combined every single customization option under one but they have split it according to the category it belongs to. If you go to battery here you will be able to see this small animation and I kind of really liked it like the way it represents the total amount of battery which is present in this room is amazing. And here if you see last charge, I was kind of doing the standby test of this row with always on display, always on and I did use media. So basically last charged four days ago, still 50% battery left and it still says two days of battery life still remaining. Battery temperature is 36 degrees and if you tap here, you can actually change it to Fahrenheit just by tapping once. That's really nice as well. And then on the bottom, you can see battery manager, which will tell you if all the applications are actually using the battery nicely. Then you have thermal profiling, where if you go and select per application, you can choose what kind of application is that. And then you will have that specific thermal profile applied to it. But however, you cannot really put additional touch response sensitivities options as you were seeing in Evolution X in this room. That's not just available here. And then basically smart charging is available so you can turn it on and then if you want your charging to stop at a specific point and then start automatically below a specific point you can put that as well. And then battery icons you can choose whatever battery icon you want and then the percentage icon where, where you want it inside the icon left of the icon or maybe just there. Now if you go to display here you would not see much options here besides this weather options which you can customize. And if you can enable it, you know, you will get weather reports directly on the ambient display. You can choose the icon pack and stuff. This is there. This is something that's not there in Evolution X and I would like to have this there as well. And then status bar icon, you can select whichever icons you want on the top or you can keep it clean. And then ambient display, which I have already turned on as always on because there's a cache to it, which I'll tell later in the video. And then if I go outside, there is not really much options besides this button option where you can enable the advanced option, advanced restart. So basically, if you go here and tap this, you will see the advanced reboot options which are present here. Then power menu actions, you can select all these. If I select enable all these things, these would be enabled and you can see these options directly here. And if I tap here, Go, I can even go to the settings. So that's something that is also new in this thing. 
However, you can also enable the maximum number of actions shown. So basically, if I enable it to the maximum and if I press the power button long enough, you will be able to see all these options turning small and they adjust to eight in a row. And that's somewhat unique to this room because I didn't really see this in any other rooms. Now let's talk about the gesture because this is one of the last features that you can see here. Quickly open the camera by double tapping the power. I turned it off because I don't like. Activate the torch on long press off power button. It's kind of basic but it's one of the most useful features that I actually use all the time. And then here you have the system navigations. You can turn it on and off which is basic. Then swipe to screenshot is there, it's present there, but long screenshot option is missing. So that's something that's not there. Then power options, you can let the power options have the sensitive content or you can remove it. It's all up to you and you can double tap on the status bar to make it sleep. So these and along with systems here, you can see basically nothing to be customized besides the front camera. You can turn on the LED. Then there is camera sounds and sound effects basically. So these are the kind of normal ones. And then you have motor calibration, which I tried. You will see, but it's ultimately gonna fail. It's gonna give error that it's not able to calibrate, couldn't calibrate. I don't know why is that. But besides that, there is not really any more options here present in Arrow OS Community Edition. So that's all when it comes to customization. It's lightly customizable, but not that extensively as you saw in Evolution X if you missed that video, I'll leave the link here so that you can go ahead and watch. Now let's talk about the camera. So this Arrow OS of Community Edition comes with Google Camera Go. It's a pretty basic camera, so you don't really get much options to here, but it's doable that you can click photos with it and there is no bug that I saw or encountered throughout my testing. So like if I click a normal photograph here and if I see the properties, which I don't know where it is. Oh. It's here and then you can see actually it's been clicked by 12 megapixels. So basically it's just a normal camera that you can use to day to day life. You can zoom in, zoom out, but you are not going to be using all the lenses present. You can enable the portrait mode. You can go to video, you can go to photos and you can even translate. These are all the options that's going to work. So it's pretty basic camera, which is present Google camera go. Now let's talk about the battery life because that's surprising and since I have done kind of a standby test here, you'll be able to see the battery life is still at 48. Last charge was four days ago. Let me see if I can find the graph. So if you look here, you'll be able to see four days ago that I charged and then it's still gonna go on if I keep using it like this for three more days. So battery backup is something that you would not miss in this room and that's something that you will actually probably like. On full charge, I am expecting a screen on time of at least five to six hours, depending upon how you use it. And if you use it normally, then just expect once in the morning that you have to charge and it will last throughout the day. That's really nice. Now let's talk about the gaming test. So I have Call of Duty here and one of the features that's missing from this room is the gaming room. That's gonna be missed, but let's see how that compensates with the performance. Maybe the performance is so good that you actually wouldn't really re require. Second thing that you can notice here is the flickering on the screen. That's because anti-flickering mode is not really available with this room. So what you see on the screen is the flickering that is actually happening on the screen. But on the camera, it's kind of visible if I tilt it, but with your eyes, you won't really see it. But it's one of the causes that actually creates headache on lawn exposure of the screen in your eyes. Graphics here, very high max and everything maxed out. This time I'm gonna choose BR mode graphic as realistic and that's all the settings. You can see FPS counter is still here. So what we are gonna do, go to multiplayer and gonna choose a team deathmatch. So we are in the game. At the moment we are still waiting for one player and a person joined. If you guys would like to play this game with me, you can always ping me on Instagram and follow me there and we can always play a game or two every day. Okay, let's see. I would like you to know that you can always keep an eye on this FPS counter so as to know if the performance is good enough. Okay, I don't really see anyone there. 
he did take lead. Oh. So far, I don't really see any frame drops or any jitter lag whatsoever. On Evolution X in the last video, which I will leave the link in the description as well as in the pop-up menu. Now, if you see the disadvantage of not having a gaming mode dedicatedly is that whenever you are playing the game and you accidentally press your hand on top of light sensor, it kind of makes the screen dark and then you have difficulty watching it. Whoa, 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 whoa. We won. How is that possible? We won with one score. That's quite surprising. But yeah, I did not do good at all. But besides that, you know, besides my bad performance, the game's performance was not really bad at all. Like I really enjoyed it. And I think if you are a gamer or if you are actually focused in gaming or doing competitive gaming, you would really enjoy gaming on this phone. And post gaming effects. Let's talk about that. The screen has not been warmed up at all, like, like very minutely. And then at the back as well, it's not really major warmed up. It's not nothing like that. Evolution X after gaming for such long time had kind of a bit more aggressive effect on the phone. Like the temperature was a bit more higher than what it is on Arrow OS. And that's one more bad thing about Evolution X. The latest update that I tested last week, maybe they will fix it up. But Arrow OS in that perspective is amazing. Now let's talk about the bugs or the features that are missing from this room. So one of the features that I really would like the community edition to have is the gaming mode because without the gaming mode when you are playing the game it's actually gonna turn on your brightness low and high that's gonna result in you getting distracted and then you will die second of all if you see here this is an always on display times visible fingerprints there and the fps counter is here now what will happen when i press my fingerprint the brightness kind of increases and then decreases now it's not going to be having any issues if you are sitting in a bright light but if you are in a dark room at night and you try to unlock the phone it's going to be annoying when you have such bright light directly at your eyes. Thirdly there is no support for FOD on screen off. So basically right now if you see this is ambient display. This is the display that is already working. If I turn the ambient display off and I try to unlock the phone I first have to wake up the phone and then unlock the phone. I don't know why custom rooms are not able to implement that feature of FOD on screen off because I would really want to have one room which actually does it. Then finally there is Google Co cam in this room which might not be a deal breaker if you are not into photography that much but if you are you might have to install Magisk first and then flash a next camera because that's just going to give you all the lenses capabilities because right at now you are only restricted to using 12 megapixel camera and not the other ones. So those are some things that I would like to see in the future updates of community edition along with more, one more thing. Along with all that I would also like to see an update option because right now if you if you see here I'm typing update in settings and it is giving me system updates under system but when I tap on it it's not present here. So in community edition you don't really have that option as well which I would like to see in the future because then every time I have to go to the website to check if there is an update and then pull that update out and then flash it through TWRP, it's just a lot of work for a ROM. And the point of ROM is to make your life easy, not difficult. So those are the few points that I actually would like community edition of Aero OS Android 11 to improve. But rather than that, performance wise and everything else, it's just amazing. Like besides the lack of some features, if you can deal with it, it's really good room and I think you should really try it. All in all, let me know in the comment section below what you guys thought about this room. And if you are actually planning to install this, I'll leave the link below the like button. And don't forget to hit that like if you enjoyed watching this video. If you're new to my channel, hit that subscribe and join the family. Every week you are only gonna get intelligent. Next week, I think I'm planning to install and test Pixel Experience because I think it has improved a bit. If you have any more questions let me know in the comment section below or any suggestions they are also welcome there and i'll be catching you guys next week with another video until then take care stay safe and peace